Okay, now let's look at our first case study, and this is going to be a decoding case study, okay? Uh, and it's going to talk about how in the decoding process, it's really important that the student has a strong phonological and phonemic awareness background, okay? So let's take a moment and, and take a look at this question. It's number one. I want you to take one minute. It's not that long. I want you to practice reading it from here to here, okay? Everyone take one minute. Pause the video, start reading, go. Unpause, make sure you pause me. Always pause me, read it, unpause, good. I'm gonna read it real quick because you'll notice it's got a, I don't wanna say a low linguistic complexity, but you know, and compared to the other questions that we're gonna do, this one's uh, as nice as it's gonna get. The question is literally one sentence. The answers are what? They're like a half a sentence or a phrase. So it's considered a basic question. It's from that 190 test. But remember, these basic questions are really good to study because they help you match up scenarios with core concepts and they do it relatively fast, okay? So, so let's just read this over. It says, as a beginning, as students begin to read, let me circle that, students begin to read. So we're talking about a beginner reader. Yes. And we think about beginner readers, readers that might be coming across a word like frog, right? We think about that age group for beginner readers. We're looking at, you know, maybe kindergarten, five to six. And uh, there are a lot of students at kindergarten that are reading right, right? A lot of students are working with those basic words, like um, the words like this with blends, CCVC or CVC words, constant vowel constant like cat. Lots of beginner readers in kindergarten that would be working at this stage, but not everyone works at the same pace. There's some first graders, six to seven, that also would be working at this at this range. Um, and there's also plenty of pre-kindergarten students too that would also, in pre-K, pop between four and five, also be considered a beginning reader. So that phrase beginner reader, it's kind of a, it could be our four to five year olds or our five to six year olds or a six to seven year olds. So what I like to think is when I see beginner reader, I'm just gonna go with a kindergartner. And that way I know plus or minus a year, that's what the students could fall into. So we have a student, maybe a kindergarten here. And the ability to blend phonemes orally, that means when they're, when they're talking, and they're able to say things like um, street orally, okay? Because they, their ability to blend phonemes orally, they had, in order to say the word street, they had to blend these sounds, st, r, right? E, t. They had to blend all these sounds. There's one, two, three, four, five sounds in street that they blended. Their ability to uh, orally, uh, their ability to blend phonemes orally, like when they say street or when they say frog, one, two, three, four, contributes to their reading development primarily because it helps students with what? Does it help them with sight word vocabulary? Sight words are what? High frequency sight words. High frequency sight words are words that we want students to rapidly recognize in the decoding process. Now we could break them up if you wanted to into two groups, regular and irregular. The regular words are like uh, basic words like cat, uh, uh, stuck, uh, street. These are all everyday basic words and they're all decodable everyday basic words. That we'd want students to recognize as they read, but usually when it says sight words, it's referencing the high frequency irregular sight words. And that's this second group here. And those are words like, and this is important team, the, of, some, one, what. Okay. Now, these are all words that are considered to be phonetically irregular. Uh, they're words that, you know, you can't really use phonics to decode. I mean, this isn't the or the. This is not uh, of, or, you know, or, or of. This is not, uh, 
you know, uh, som or psalm, right? It, so all these are phonetically irregular. Can you see that, T? Uh, I'll do this one right here. What? I'm not saying ah in what, in ah in cat, and I'm not saying long a either. It's not wait. So they're considered phonetically irregular. And so we call those, the technical term is high frequency irregular sight words, or for short, we might just reference these as sight words, words that we want a student, like a kindergartner, to rapidly recognize um, in a text. Sometimes we call them popcorn words. Now we're going to come across sight words uh, later on in this class. And this is going to be one of our key vocab words. It's not the answer to this question but you're getting exposure to it now, okay? Like this, uh, here's another one. Um, um, guess the meaning of unfamiliar words in the context. This has to do with context clues. We're now we're not gonna do context clues, but this is usually a, a surrounding words that help us to identify an unknown word in the passage or in a sentence or passage. We're not gonna do, we'll, we'll save that one for a little later, but that's another major idea, a context clue. Um, the one that we are going to do is B, uh, and that's what we're doing right now, and that's the answer. It says use letter sound correspondence, or, or another way of saying that, use uh, phonics, right? Use letter sound correspondence to decode words. So a student's ability to blend words in oral language, it's going to help them. The more they're able to blend words in oral language, the more success they're gonna have when it comes to letter sound correspondence because they're gonna to get to this word street and they're gonna to start to decode it. S, t, r, e, t, street, right? And their ability to take those sounds that they've identified, s, t, r, e, t, street, and blend it together, it will help them recognize it. Or frog, they're gonna be like f, r, a, g frog. If a student is not able to blend orally, then this becomes an issue because they won't recognize the word when they come across it and decode it. It will remain as f, r, a, g, and they won't recognize it as frog. I know this is a little tricky, but this one here is the answer. Okay, Dean, onsets and rhymes is with phonemic awareness, is with phonological awareness. It's not it. So you notice, team, this uh, question, which is basic and easy and from an old test. Okay, I give you all those things. But this question, look at all the all the ideas that are here, right? We have uh, we have sight word, uh, sight words, we have uh, letter sound correspondence, we have uh, context clues, we have onsets and rhymes. All these ideas are going on here. You got to know each one of them. Okay, so hopefully you're with me here. And you, you realize that beginner reader is referencing a kindergartner. And you know that it's really important to have that phonological and phonemic awareness skills down. Because those things, like this phonemic awareness skill of blending phonemes orally. Remember, that's a phonemic awareness skill. That skill is going to help students when it comes time to do letter sound correspondence to decode words in a text. The answer is B. And this is a great first question team from this test here. And we get to review all this vocab, phonemic awareness, that's, that's using that blending a phoneme skill, letter sound correspondence, that's AKA phonics, decodable words. These are words that, um, you know, like uh, like a CVC word is like cat, hat. Uh, a CV word is like on or in or at, right? So these are all very decodable words. Uh, sight words we said are like words that you can't decode, like the, of, some, one, what. Right, they're they're phonetically irregular, and we want students to rapidly recognize them. Context clues we'll talk about later about those surrounding words that help you identify an unknown word or a mis or self correct a miscue that doesn't make sense. We'll clarify that later. Onset and rhyme we talked about that in phonemic aware in phonological awareness like gr a. So team, look, I know the answer is B. I know we could have stopped this video about five minutes ago, but 
do you see all these other ideas? You constantly have to be looping back, not only get the right answer, but clarify these other ideas in the questions, okay? All right, let's keep going. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is gonna be another one connecting the importance of phonological and phonemic awareness to decoding, okay? 